<laughs> All righty, let's get into it. It's the uh, post-Saturday press conference and in the middle, Craig Lowndes and uh, Jamie Winkup looking a bit like Samuel L. Jackson with the backwards flight cap today. Nice work on picking up an Armour or Pol Award. Uh, we'll start with the man in the middle and uh, we'll start with Craig, actually, since you drove the car first today. Uh, so much excitement today, Craig. Thankfully for your car, it was sort of uh, free and out of the way of all that drama. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, you know, it was important to get a good start off the line. You know, we're on P2 and uh, it was almost a reenactment of the Gold Coast between Alex and I and uh, you know, he got a bit of wheel spin uh, from what I can see and you know, we got a, you know, a ripper start. Led from there and then, of uh, course, with all the showers coming and going, it was, uh, you know, it was quite tricky to make sure that you maintained on the island and uh, um, not hit any, hit any of the curbs. Um, GT said his car faded a little bit, but uh, you know, Will Brown did a fantastic job to put them up, elevate them to second. Um, and then, again, you know, car was clean, car was strong, and uh, yeah, sort of handed over to Jamie for this afternoon. Uh, let's just talk about what happened in the 97 and the 99 as a result. Craig Baird put his hand up and said he made the wrong call. Did the driver group, would they rather see calls made in the race and then occasionally get one wrong, or would you rather see post-race investigations and not get them wrong? Do we have a driver group? We tried to start one, but uh, no one liked it. Um, oh, look, I think that uh, no one's ever perfect. You know, they get criticised if they do a post-race investigation, then they get criticised to making them really quickly. So, mm. you know, Beardo's, you know, we were obviously in Fox, and you know, Beardo's put his hand up and said he made a mistake. He took the, uh, the angle of, of where Anton was going and, of course, where Shane was, but didn't probably take into consideration that Shane was probably 10 k's quicker than Anton. So uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, Beto said if, if not the drive-through, he only would have made one more spot up from where he was, ended up. I think the problem was contact at Turn 1. I might just quiz Jamie on that one. Before we talk about the positives, since you're going to be on the commission soon, you're going to be in these situations making the rules. <laughs> So, should we make these calls in race? We saw what happened with you at Pookie, for example, and there was a lot of feedback on that. Yeah, I, I, th I think so. I think we, um, we try to make the call as quick as we possibly can. You've got to think of what the side effect is, and that's people standing on podiums with an inquiry still to go, no one's celebrating, there's just this dead feeling. So we want to try to avoid that as much as we possibly can. Um, I think it was a... I think it, Better. We're very lucky to have. Uh, after my poor comments in New Zealand, um, I got I got an opportunity to spend some time in in the in the uh, in race control at Bathurst, and I was blown away by how much was going on. Like we're flat out trying to control two cars in our garage. Uh, they got they got 25 cars to control. The flag marshals, the the recovery crews. It's it's unbelievable. So um, no one's gonna no one's gonna go through the year without making any mistakes. But for for Better to put his hand up. And and say, hey, I got it wrong, like like what we see in the AFL. Um, I, th I think it's fantastic. I, th I think it takes a big man to do that, and he uh, he, he performed really well. Well said. Uh, you're off the pole tomorrow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Back to the, uh, back to the fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, with uh, you know with with poles with with yeah with pole positions being so hard to come by this year, uh, you take every one you can get, and we saw an opportunity there with the qualifying races, and of course with the with the rain come down. So we pushed hard. Uh, Lansley did a fantastic job, and um, my car was very quick, and we're able to um, able to get a yeah, um, I think my second pole for the year, which is uh, which has been pretty lean f for our standard. And finally, from me for you, Teams Championship was sort of one step forward, another step back there with Shane in that race, so that's still very much alive. Yeah, that's that's a battle that's going on for sure. Um, we, we, we're trying to do, do whatever we can, so well, I think we lost a few points today, but um, long day tomorrow. All right, well done. I'll direct some more questions to the primary drivers, and I'll get straight to the press where I can. Andre, great effort from you and Bryce. When he was facing backwards between turns three and four, do you think you'd be starting off the front row? Yeah, definitely not. There's about <coughs> three or four times during that race that I had, you know, thought it was all over into turn one to start with, and when he spun and went far off. But yeah, to his credit, he gathered it all up, kept a cool head, and um, you know, in those situations, you can sort of um, go the other way, and just it can all all the slippery slopes. So yeah, really happy. Obviously, finishing second, uh, put it in a good position tomorrow, and who knows what the weather's going to be like. But yeah, the car was uh, real good. The old. Uh, this an Ultima farewell tour is going good so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, well done today and a great drive. Looking forward to seeing the speed that you guys have had all per Tech Enduro Cup tomorrow. Let's go to Dave. He's got his voice back. That's good. Yeah, That's yeah, a good sort thing. Of. Sort of. Sort of do. Uh, firstly, from an Erebus point of view, disappointing what happened with Anton. Penalty aside, you guys could have had a really good day today. Um, yeah, I feel really bad what happened to Anton. That sucks. Um, just he didn't have a good day today. But our car nine, we survived the sand down sprint race, which is always good. 
those intermittent conditions can be shit for any anyone. So um, it was my car was not too bad. It's probably the best wet car I've had in the last three years, I think. Yeah. So I was happy. So in all conditions, heading into tomorrow, you guys topped the practice session earlier in dry conditions. That's a pretty good sign. Um, yeah, at the minute we feel like we're Friday specialists. We go a lot faster on Friday than we do any other time for the weekend. So we need to fix that and um, make sure we go faster the right time when it counts. But uh, yeah, I think our car is good in the wet and the dry, dry conditions. So looking forward to the race. I've just got to um, hand it over to Luke in third. So you get a good start, can you please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty please. Hey? Pretty, Pretty please. please. Yeah. I'll do anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> anything. <laughs> let's go to the journalists. Neighbours don't care. <laughs> Before that goes off the rails, let's go to the journalists in the room. Uh, Andre and Bryce, uh, you guys obviously have shown great pace all Enduro Cup, as uh, Chad had said. Um, results haven't come, but hopefully great, well, great chance here to, to get that result that you guys have threatened to do all, all campaign. Yeah, it's been a bit of a shame so far. Bathurst were pretty fast and one of the only five or six cars to get into the threes, which was really good. And that, that weekend didn't go our way due to my mistake at the end. And then Gold Coast, through various reasons, didn't work out either. And we had fast car the whole time. And to have someone like Bryce, I really want to utilise his, his speed. And so far, we haven't been able to do that through different things. So hopefully tomorrow we can get a clean start off the front row and um, yeah, just keep it clean and try and get a, a good result because I think we're two DNFs and a 25th so far. So <laughs> it's pretty horrendous. <laughs> and, uh, Jamie, I was going to ask, um, I guess the, the, the form you guys have shown through these last sort of five events or so, I guess, does that all kind of build good momentum for 2020 as well when, uh, when I guess, the championship battle resumes? Uh, yeah, I, th I think we, we had a tough start to the year to... Um, don't want to say the word, but uh, you know it was it was challenging. But um, with the way supercars have, have handled the year, and I think the cars are as even as they they've been all year. So um, which which is great. It means we go out there and race, and uh, it's uh, it's not one car winning all the time. So um, no, we're we're. But then again, there's more big changes again for uh, for 2020 as far as the the aero goes. So um, yeah, it doesn't uh, speed at the end of this year doesn't guarantee anything for next year. <coughs> I guess a um, question for all you guys. This is the last sort of Sandown 500 for a bit. Is there any sort of emotion to that about trying to, you know, be the last people to win that? David? David? David. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> is it well, the, it's the last, the last Sandown yeah. 500. Yeah. I always try pretty hard to win every race, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How emotional are you? Oh, how emotional are you? Um, yeah, not really. None at all, actually. I, I feel sorry for supercars because they tried to move it into a better weather pattern, and obviously that was a disaster. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I actually, I love Sandown. It's one of my favourite races of the year. It's really, really cool. It like, feels dangerous. You know, the, the fence is really close. Feels like you're going a million miles an hour down the back straight. Yeah. Um, the surface used to wear out, but now it's pretty new, so it's going to be interesting. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know how we feel. Do we yeah, feel right? I, I think we. I think we love Sandown because of the history, and because you, know? you pump everyone, probably. Yeah. No, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's not many corners, so yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> make, it's easier for most for simple people. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we love we love Sandown, and not necessarily. It doesn't have to be the 500. So um, I hope, hope you know, we, we're going to be re returning here next year, uh, and I like the retro thing as well. I think yeah, that's a. Cool. Uh, I think, think that's a nice touch to it all um, in saying that. We haven't done anything. We went a couple of rounds early. But, um, yeah, the retro thing's nice. you got that funky hat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, do you like it? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> I've got to watch what I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you do. Bryce Forward, let's get you into the action. Um, big day for you. The Super 2 race was crazy. And also you had that spin there. Managed to spin in fourth and finish in fourth. That's a, a crazy day from your perspective. Yeah, um, we had two spins and two lap records today, so I don't know whether it's good or bad. Um, yeah, look, absolutely crazy day for us, and uh, you know the sort of driving in that co-driver race was absolutely not what I'm uh, about, and not real happy about it. But um, you know, fortunately, I was—I don't know how I did. I was a bit of a you know a bit of a pinball that didn't end up hitting the fence somehow. But luckily, I kept it all together, and um, you know didn't didn't lose too many spots and handed over to Andre for fourth. And I was quite happy to get out of the car after that race, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Andre, if I could just ask you, you sort of hinted at, you know, this is the farewell tour for the Ultima. 
Is there a sense of frustration within the garage that you guys are starting to get the pace out of the car, starting to get the consistency out of the car, and it's the end of the time with the car? Yeah, definitely. There's been a few conversations about carrying on, obviously, with the car, but, um, yeah, there's many facets to it. Obviously, having a car that's so old um, from a commercial point of view isn't, isn't good, as, 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 along with a speed point of view, and just having to be a homologating team obviously puts a lot of stress on the team as well. Going back to two cars, um, it's just a lot easier, I think, to change over to the Ford. But, yeah, definitely it's quite ironic that this starting to come good now, but, um, yeah, they've always, always been half right if you get them in the window, but for us it's just been finding that window that's been the struggle. Just uh, a last one for Craig, and a bit of a out of left field one. We've seen some pretty good drives from youngsters today. Bryce is one of them, Will Brown, Tom Randall's been quick all through the Enduros as one of the more experienced guys and also a media personality. How have you rated the rookies and the younger guys and their performances? Oh, I think fantastic. I think that, uh, you know, I got my opportunity um, as a young person and, and this is what it's all about, is to, is to showcase their talent and, and uh, you know, pair up with, with other teammates and, and, and teams to be able to showcase hopefully a future in the sport. And I think that there's no doubt there is a, there's a bright future and a bright uh, growth of that side of it. Um, you know, for me, it, it's, it's great to still be able to rub shoulders. Um, you know, Will Brown had a joke on the, on the grid on the way uh, to the start of that final race today about, uh, you know, I need to slow down more. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's great to see that uh, all teams um, are giving the young guys an opportunity because, you know, I was in that boat, uh, boat back in 94 and, um, and it's great to see that continuing on. Nice, thanks for that. All right, guys, best of luck tomorrow. We'll see you back here. Yeah, thank you.